Hello everyone. I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. And I have to admit that uh, I am definitely jumping outside of my comfort zone right now. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is I had a number of enlightening experiences this week, as a matter of fact, which uh, has uh, made me uh, want to express what I've experienced to hopefully help others. If I help one person, then I believe it's worth it. Uh, and the four things I really want to talk about is suffering, gratitude, as well as strengths and weaknesses. And, and the reason I, I've chosen suffering first is because I am dealing with a heartbreak over a friend, a very dear friend of mine, who is going through a very difficult time and suffering from MS. And I would like to begin by asking prayers for her. Um, if I could have one Christmas, one Christmas thing, it would be a Christmas miracle um, and having her get better and find something that uh, helps her. But with that said, I'm also well aware that there are so many people suffering out there and I have so many friends and family members and so many people that are suffering from not only physical ailments and disabilities, but are also um, suffering from others as well. And that is uh, an experience that I just had the other day is um, after finding out that my friend has declined rapidly through her boyfriend because when we speak she lives out of town so she tries to spare me the anguish of of the pain of knowing uh, that she is suffering and um, however uh, her boyfriend let me know that she is actually in the hospital and spending Christmas in the hospital and um, so as I Throughout that heartbreak, I um, actually was at going to the post office and I was sending them something as well as um, had a number of other boxes as well that I was sending out. I was um, staying or in the car putting everything together and I noticed this man outside. Um, he was right outside his car and he looked stuck. At first, my first instinct was that maybe he had the stress, the stress of Christmas got to him and that he was dealing with a dangerous um, ailment because I started noticing like a very, at first, like a nervous twitch, a repetitive thing. And and so I wasn't quite sure what was going on. And, um, and, uh, and I first just kind of, you know, looked and made sure there wasn't anything where he um, possibly could have been dealing with some emotional issue that could have been disturbing or dangerous. But the more, the longer I sat there, I realized that this poor man, as the rain came down, he was still there. He didn't go in his car. He didn't go in the post office and he was just there. And it was like, he still kept that movement, um, but he was stuck. And well, I have to admit, I have ADHD uh, paired with anxiety and PTSD. And so I could relate to what was going on, that feel that that being stuck, because I have been so overwhelmed with emotions or stress or just too much on my plate and just felt stuck or felt like I just, you know, I would uh, run in circles basically is how I felt. And I probably did. <laughs> so I, so the longer I sat there and, and watched, I could see that, um, something something was going on and I wanted to reach out to help him. And I also wonder too, could he have been um, confused? So I did decide to get out of the car and um, and asked if, you know, how he was doing or if everything was okay. And at that moment, he expressed to me that he was depressed and also had OCD. And, um, and so it, Again, once again, I was heartbroken to see what he was going through. And um, I was glad that I asked because a lot of people could have let their fear keep them from helping someone. And at this moment, I just felt like I needed to reach out and help him. And well, 
as soon as I started talking to him and he mentioned, you know, the frustration, the OCD, so he had depression and OCD and, but then he went on to say that he lost his wife as well as his father. And so I, being in a situa similar situation with, with the things I that I have to deal with, I have learned to have gratitude and to change my perspective. So I wanted to initiate that with him. And so I said, you know, even though I, I understand and believe me, and I kind of ex it let him know of experiences that I have, and he just laughed because he, he could relate to them the same as I could. And, and believe me, they're frustration, frustrating to me. And so it kind of, I think at first it gave him some relief to know that he's not, and at first I could tell he was embarrassed, but you know, then once he realized that, wait, I could relate to him, I've experienced some things that were quite similar, um, that, you know, he was able to laugh and start, you know, and started talking a little more. And I mentioned that even though, you know, I understand how frustrating it is and how heartbreaking it is to have loved ones, you know, especially the holidays, to have loved ones that are no longer here. However, there are so many things that we are to be grateful for. And there's so many things that everybody has something to be grateful for. We are alive. We're breathing. We have our eyesight or that he had his eyesight, his arms and his legs, which not everybody has. Not everybody. So, so there's so many things that we are taking for granted that other people are praying for. And they aren't little things at all to them. Because if you don't have them, they are not small at all. So as soon as I went there and, and he just switched to being a smile on his face and he's like, you know what, you're right. And he went on to say how, you know, his mother, he, he has his mother alive who's here, how proud he is of his son, that he has brothers here, you know. And I mean, it just was instantaneously, he switched to a different perspective. And so as he, as I spoke to him, I, I was like, come on, let's go inside. And, you know, I'm going to go, I have to get, um, mail out these boxes and come to find out he, all he needed was a stamp. And I was there for quite some time getting my, my boxes together. And, um, and it just was even more heartbreaking to think what a struggle that was for him just to get a stamp. That was just such a, a big ordeal. And, but he did, and it took a few minutes, but he walked in the post office with me and he got his stamp. And of course there was a long line. So we sat there and we talked quite a bit. And, um, and throughout our conversation, it just, I mean, it just changed and to hear all the positive things from now, just moments before his perspective was completely different and just switching that gratitude switch really made such a big difference. Now, I also, at the same time, it just broke my heart because seeing what he went through reminded me or, or just brought to my mind what my dear friend is struggling with because her struggles and suffering is more disabling physically. Um, of course, they were both physically disabling in these two cases, however, uh, she is she is losing her sight and her ability to walk and um, it just was so heartbreaking for me to think like what she struggles with on a day-to-day -day basis after seeing what this this poor man goes through and but being able to switch his attitude with the gratitude really made a difference um, I can relate so much when it comes to having to struggles because like I had already mentioned, I have my struggles and I get so frustrated over them. And, um, and as everybody does, we all have our, our problems or issues or suffering. And it's not, it doesn't make it much easier for your problems are very difficult for you. And just because somebody has bigger problems doesn't mean that yours are less, but sometimes that can change the perspective as well. Now, in this case, what was, what was, I definitely noticed is throughout, once our conversation took place and once uh, he got a stamp and I was done mailing my packages, this same man that took forever, like, or took a very long time. And even once he's like, okay, I'm coming, you know, once he said, yeah, sure, I'll come in with you. You know, it took a few minutes 
for him to actually take those first few steps. And, but after we had talked and he got his mind off of his, his disability, uh, he actually, he took off like, he went right out the front door. He walked ahead of me. I had to come run after him. And, um, and I even pointed that out to him. And I said, you know, a lot of times our fear sets us back. And I mean, that was a prime example because he was so distracted that he no longer was, was so focused on his fear of being able to, to get back to his car or to even like his fear was to get inside. Like it's because it was a struggle. And I know with me having the ADHD, sometimes, oh my gosh, <laughs> my fear of it or my insecurity of it makes it that much worse. I actually freeze my brain because I have... I'm insecure of it. I don't have the confidence that I should. The fact I am right now doing this is so huge. <laughs> you have no idea. But um, so I made it a point to, to point that out to him. And I also, we got in the, the conversation because we all have, not only do we have our fears, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. Instead of focusing on our weaknesses, focus on our strengths. And now for instance, he, he went on and, and to tell me about, you know, his business sense and, and all this stuff. Like, he, this this man is so capable of, of so many things. Yes, he, he, he might have had, you know, something very frustrating that was disabling. You know, something is trying to get in the post office. But you know what? He has a, ma a major business sense and, um, and has made some major accomplishments from that. So, so with that said, even with me, like, because... On a day-to-day -day thing, I can I can eat a meal and practically forget I had it just because of the ADHD and I'm constantly going and 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 I have the next thing on my mind that I overlook it and even I could relate to the OCD because I used to think I had it because I'd always want to check the door, check the garage door opener again to make sure it was it was down, and that was because of my insecurity of well wait you know because. Maybe that one time that I did forget it, but it always haunts me that, okay, because I know that I don't, I do things and I'm not always aware of them. But at the same time as the, the weakness, I actually have major strengths. I, in, a, in addition to, and despite rather, despite having the ADHD, I, when I got my degree in nutrition, I was awarded by the American Dietetic Association where I have the highest grade score of all the students. Now, I'm not on here to brag about that, but what I'm stating is, and even when I worked for Lincare, was with a bunch of medical professionals, I actually still, once again, got the award of having the highest score. Now, number one, yes, it is a massive passion of mine, so I am very focused and interested, And but I have learned to ultra-focus, and, and so I've compensated for a major weakness. Now, on day-to-day -day living, most people... <laughs> probably think, you know, couldn't even imagine that I would have that capability, but I do. So, so we should focus more on our, our strengths and our gratitude because it changes everything. Just the fact that this man was focusing on his insecurities and his weakness, he could hardly get inside, but he, as soon as he, he started thinking of the things he's grateful for and focusing more on the positives, it completely change to disability and and it was as if he didn't even have it so so many times we need to we need to keep that in mind now when it comes to the suffering because unfortunately i i don't now there is there's definitely a lot said of the power power of positive thinking and power of mind but a lot you know that's not always <laughs> the case and especially in some people that are dealing with with very difficult illnesses and very painful and very traumatizing situations that may not be possible in their minds um but everything is possible <laughs> if you really put your mind to it but with that said there's also if you take your mind off of the the pain and the disability and the suffering you could focus on other things and i'm just so grateful that my friend has an amazing boyfriend who's who's been her angel for years and and i couldn't imagine how much worse things would be if it wasn't for that so so just like we have our strengths that compensate our weaknesses we also have 
some great things that also compensate for our suffering. So if we spend more time focusing on that, it will make things so much easier. Now, another suffering I know a lot of us are going through for the holidays, uh, including myself, is, uh, and, and needless to say, today there were a lot of tears, um, is lost of loved ones. And um, this is a time that makes it really difficult. And like the friend, the nice man that I met, you know, the first thing that he said was that, you know, he lost his wife and his, his father. And... And, but then once things changed, he was, you know, grateful for who he had. Well, I've lost, you know, this has been my 11th Christmas without my mom and, and, and recently lost other family members. And so this, this was a very difficult Christmas. And, and I could see so many people just fight the tears and, and the memories or, or whatever would, would bring that. But at the same time, we, we have each other. And also, if it helps comfort, I have throughout the years, I had such a difficult time losing my mom. But I'm telling you what, I feel just because somebody has passed over does not mean they're gone. And they are still with us in spirit. And I truly believe that we will, we will be with them again. And, um, and even I... I've had some, since my mom has passed, I've had her come in dreams and as well as, ironically, I was shopping, uh, Christmas shopping, and there happened to be, I walked by a group of these different sayings, and of course, there was the one saying, if you can dream it, you can achieve it, that whole quote, and I'm, my mom had that, I mean, that was her, her, her motto, where she had even bookmarks that said it, and I'm telling you what, I just stopped and looked. And was just like, you know, I'm like, okay, mom, where are you? Because I know you're here. And uh, fortunately, I didn't say it out loud because, you know, I would have probably had more looks than uh, than usual. But um, but at the same time, it really, it gave me comfort. And even something, you know, the dream, everything. So, so sometimes if we focus, instead of being focused on the sadness and, and the missing them, maybe open our eyes and we'll see signs and, and, and things that give us that reassurance or give us that, that peace knowing that they're not really gone. They are still here in spirit or, or maybe more. Because um, who really knows? Who can really say? So, But as long as you have that positive open mind, to things that it makes things so much easier. And and one thing I, d I do also wanna mention is sometimes, just like my situation with this man, so many people misperceive a weakness or an, an illness or a disability as something else. Because I'll tell you what, having my, my strange mannerisms with the ADHD and the anxiety, I have definitely had people misjudge me and misperceive me and, and, and think it was something else. And um, just like my initial concern with this man was, okay, could he be dangerous? Could this be, you know, um, you know, honestly, I first thought it was postal in the postal office, okay? Because, you know, there are, there are, situations where you do have to be careful. There's many situations where you have to be careful. But uh, something told me in my heart too, you can't be fearful and and keep from helping other people because in the whole scheme of things, that's the most important thing of all. And um, so it's, I'm hoping that somehow me passing on this experience that I had may actually help you in some way and help bring you peace and comfort this holiday season and and joy because if you're gra if you're grateful you have joy and uh not only would does the gratitude help on so many levels uh, me having the severe anxiety uh, a few weeks ago in church the priest happened to mention that um made the statement that gratitude with gratitude you don't have anxiety or you and i thought wow that's a pretty you know strong statement and then i thought about it and i'm like you know what those days that are when i'm grateful is not when i have my anxiety my anxiety is when i'm like worried about all these other things and da, 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 and i'm actually thinking negatively because the fear of this that or the other is not me being positive and and being grateful 
it's it's the opposite and so i've actually made that a new exercise in addition to saying three things i'm grateful for if i find that i'm getting in that anxious mode then immediately i start thinking of things to be grateful for and i'll tell you what it really helps a lot so i'm hoping that this is something else that i could pass on and help you with and before though i finish i do want to mention something that i find um pretty interesting i guess uh or exciting about what took place is is during our conversations and this is something that just could be coincidental but I don't believe it is is um, and it actually happened to be the beginning of our conversation as uh, with the man that I met at the post office he happened to mention uh, right away that you know he came here from Turkey when he was six well ironically I happened to go to Turkey and visit a town called Ephesus now the minute I said that, his eyes lit up. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's where Mary, that's where Mary was. And, and, and I'm like, yes, and baby Jesus and Jesus. Because Ephesus, Turkey um, is where there's a town. And it was, we're talking B.C. and D.C. And they have still some of the ruins of the partial original place where Jesus walked and was and it is so fascinating and i found that wow you know here he came from this this town just days before christmas and and he was so grateful for me for the fact that i changed his perspective and i helped him but as i drove away i realized wait a minute <laughs> he actually helped me because needless to say especially overwhelmed with the holidays and me in a car with the packages i was already running behind because i had a uh, an appointment i had things going everywhere and just like what would be simple for somebody mailing off packages i was like worried i was gonna get the tags all mixed up and everything else um and it was frustrating so but to see his struggles it made me realize wait a minute you know it's i i it changed my perspective to realize that you know in the scheme of things I can compensate and it's not that bad and even though it's heartbreaking to see what he's going through I also got to see and witness you know the, the difference and the change in gratitude and and when he wasn't as fearful and wanted to just walk out the uh, he just walked out the door because he wasn't focused and thinking about what his insecurity was it made such a huge difference and um, and a lot of us have to learn to to think past our insecurities and what's holding us back because believe me um i've i've definitely let my insecurities hold me back and not only i think this is the first time i've done anything like this so i can i really need to thank this this person and somehow i feel like yeah you know, here you know maybe he was sent there i was meant to be there at that given moment just like he was meant to be there for me and I just a lot of emotions going on especially this holiday and would once again like to ask for a prayer prayers for not just my friend actually I have so many friends who have children that are suffering that so many people are suffering I want to ask for prayers for everybody suffering so many people are going through such hard times and 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 to pray for them and and to just be kind because you just don't know you don't know what people are going through and what they're struggling with and sometimes even his concern was what people thought obviously uh, a lot of times People have been mean or bullying and that's another issue there too and which only makes insecurities worse so if you've ever been guilty of that make it a point to focus and point out everybody's strengths don't pick apart people point out what their strengths are because you know what you will make such a difference in their life and their abilities and not only that you'll make a difference in your own 
So once again, I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and also another prayer for a Christmas miracle for my friend. And ironically, her name is Kristen. Uh, so I couldn't imagine a, a more perfect name for someone to pray for my Christmas miracle. And uh, praying for everyone. God bless you all.